experts. Welcome to the Expert Live show. We are joined today by Reebok's David Pike. Thank you so much for Welcome. coming in today. No problem. Uh, the way this is going to work is we're going to talk all things float ride. We're going to get into the product, the technology, and then we'll spend a few minutes answering your questions. So be thinking about what you want to ask David Pike. This is your yeah, yeah. This is your realm. We can ask him anything. Really put him in the hot seat um, and figure out what it is that you need to know about the float ride before you get out there and start wearing them yourself. Um, again, welcome. Thanks so much for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me. So a lot of our experts have become kind of familiar with the float ride over the past year. For those who haven't felt it yet themselves, can you let us know what's so cool about this shoe? Yeah, um, I think you know the the concept for the float ride is is really interesting. Go back to how we actually came up with the idea and applied the technology to a running shoe. Um, we were contacted by the David Clark company who are integral in uh, designing spacesuits. So they actually, you know, designed everything for everything that goes up to the International Space Station. Right. Station. And they asked um, us to come up with, you know, a lightweight cushion that could be applied to um, the boots that they actually wear under their suit when they go up to space. So our innovation team is who, um, fielded the brief has been working on this type of technology for years. And it eventually got to a place where they were able to actually put it on the boot. I think it's going up sometime next year. But um, the wheels started turning as they do at Reebok and as we were going through the product and decided, wow, everything that they said in that brief is something that we can put on a running shoe. So we took the float foam, gave it to the product team, and basically said, we want you to come up with something that would make a runner feel like they're floating. Hence the name Flow Ride, and cool. uh, from there, you know, we're that, that's how we ended up here. Very cool. So you guys were able to send out about a thousand of these, a little bit more than a thousand, to um, a bunch of our members who we called the Reebok Elite. Yeah. They got their feet in them, got to test them out. What kind of reviews and feedback did you guys get? Uh, overall, the feedback on the shoe has been unbelievable. Um, like we knew we had something good when we uh, put it out there, and we wanted to make sure you know, that we were putting out a product that we stood behind, but would also um, up our credibility in the running game. Uh, Reebok's actually rooted in running. Our history started um, over 100 years ago with J.W. Foster, who designed the first uh, racing spike. And from there, running has been a huge part of our heritage. Um, we've kind of moved away from it in the last few years. Right. But Float Ride was, you know, our, our flag in the, in the ground that, you know, here's Reebok, we're back and running. So. Um, what we've heard from people is uh, m nothing but good things. So we, we made a claim, you know, it'll feel like you're floating. It's a distraction-free run, and that's exactly what has come back to us. Um, you know, we're, we're keeping the product consistent. We will apply some of these changes over the next couple of years, but for now, um, you know, this is the product, and it's, it performs as, as advertised. Something that I know that people are already asking with this next round of float ride that's coming out, um, is the different colorways that are, are yep. going to be available? Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, um, you know, this product again, like I said, we wanted to stay consistent with it. So um, a lot of brands will come up with a great product, and six months later, it's off the market. You can't find it anymore. But for Float Ride, uh, we decided to you know leave it unchanged for 24 months, and then go back and take some of the feedback. But just right. we were so confident in the performance of it that you know we just wanted to leave it as it is. So. The colors that drop, it's the normal cadence of you know, any, any footwear. Every few months, we've been sprinkling in a few different colors. So we started with the blue and the yellow for men's and women's. Right. And now, if you go on our website, on Reebok.com, um, there's a whole offering of about six different colorways for each gender. Very cool. Yeah. I'm excited to try out something new yeah. uh, in the next season. Let's really talk about this shoe. We had sure. a chance to actually rip it in half yep. and take a look at what's inside. Um, it really is all about the foam. Yeah. There's not much else happening here. Uh, although when you wear it, you really feel like you're wearing something completely different. Right. Uh, explain to us how this is working to give you that feeling. Yeah, I, well, I would say um, as there's not a lot happening, it, it's kind of designed that way. Like it's supposed to be a little bit simpler. Um, right. Everything on, on the shoe is absolutely seamless. So really what we're working with here is four parts. You have the cage, the heel cup, the knit upper, and the foam bottom. And all four of these together just create that um, distraction-free run. So the foam itself is constructed a little bit different than your traditional EVA foam. Generally, EVA foam is constructed randomly with different 
size cells and they tend to break down faster over time because if you think about it, you have um, different parts, different sizes rubbing against each other and that friction just causes it to break down. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Flowrite foam, this, it's a, it has a consistent cell structure. So they actually work together as you're going through your run. So each run is getting that same energy return, whether it's mile one or 300. And that was just kind of the, the thinking behind it anyways. So that's the foam, that is the huge story. The rest of the shoe is just kind of, kind of cool on its own. Um, the knit upper is, has that sock-like feel, so it's very comfortable to the, to the wearer. Um, some people have said that it feels loose at times, but that's the uh, purpose of the cage around here. The, the cage wraps entirely around the uh, foot, and unlike a regular shoe that has eyelets that pulls the whole shoe together, the cage actually pulls your foot to the bottom of the shoe, so it's all working as, as one throughout your run. And then the heel cup, um, it's a cool story. It's actually developed by the same company that designed Victoria's Secret bras. So it's this, if, if you know, I'm, I know You're females imagining. more are more <laughs> familiar with that, but um, the 3D heel cup is actually like a different type of foam structure. And it actually molds to your foot over time. So the shoe really does become part of the, the, the runner. I noticed that really right out of the box, you feel secure in it. The knit really feels so soft that you don't even have to wear socks when you're running. And then the foam, like you kind of can't even put words to it. You just start running and notice that you're kind of springing forward a little right. bit faster, uh, but, but kind of without intent or purpose, you just find yourself being propelled. Yeah, it's all about the energy return. And that was, again, I go back to the brief of, of um, creating something that feels like the runner is floating. Uh, we have a different word or a different way to summarize how it is in the building, and we call it cushion without compromise. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if you think of your traditional running shoes, um, if you want cushioning, you are generally going to get a shoe that's bigger, a little bulkier, and not as, it, it's a smooth ride, but yeah. it's not as aesthetically pleasing as some other shoes. Some people are going to want to go to lightweight, and you think about like really flexible shoes yeah. that um, are comfortable at first, but aren't built to go up to 13 to 26 miles. Right. This shoe offers that lightweight feel with the cushioning um, and uh, gives any runner, whether they're running you know, a 5K all the way up to the, a marathon, the confidence to go out and achieve what they want while um, having a unique silhouette that the market really hasn't seen. For sure. Let's talk about the runners who will really gravitate to this. A lot of times, um, you know, we talk to elite or pro runners who have many different brands in their closet, yep. many different styles, depending on what they want to do that day. How does Float Ride fit into their lineup? Um, what I would tell people who are kind of experiencing Float for the, long, for, for the first time and who are, you know, working with other brands, um, that the Float Ride is just a very unique feel. Um, I wouldn't be, people, people are very loyal to their running brands and we're not, we're not foreign to that at all. We kind of know the reality sure. out there and Reebok's back and running. So we're kind of asking people to take a risk with us. Give it a try. Yeah. But we're so confident in this shoe. I would recommend it to anybody who is just interested in keeping up with their running and becoming a better runner. Um, personally, I'll take the float right out for a 10 K to a half marathon. Um, I probably wouldn't take it any further than that. But there are some people who have gotten the shoe right out of the box and run a marathon. So I, I really wouldn't um, think about working it in to your range of product. I would just, you know, offer anybody to, to go out and try it out themselves. Sure. Pick yeah. it up. Give it a feel. See how you respond to it. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of questions from our audience. So first, right out the chute, Daniel wants to know how much do these weigh? Um, I believe it's nine ounces depending on the, the size, size right yeah. around there yep um so super lightweight um you know you're gonna get a lot of flex in here but that the foam <laughs> actually returns that energy so if you imagine what i did just there that's kind of how Springs it's reacting right out. on the yeah. pavement yeah so um but again very lightweight with more cushioning than you'd uh, find in some of those you know uh, m more minimal shoes right that makes sense um, Colvis wants to know, foam makes sense, but will it last? Can we talk about the durability of the foam? Absolutely. Um, in that original brief, and with most running shoes, the standard is about 300 miles. Uh, we tested this with hundreds of people, and the mileage, I, I mean, we just saw that the foam didn't break down over time as, they, as it tends to in most shoes. Right. Um, so I would be confident offering the shoe up to, you know, anyone going four or 500 miles 
and then, you know, buying a new pair of flares. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You've got to get the new colorways, get the <laughs> new styles. Um, I can attest to that, and especially, you know, when we went out to Reebok last season um, to see the float ride, they talked about how the, it wears consistently over time. Mm -hmm. So you don't get those kind of toe marks. Yep. Um, really getting in the way of your run. It wears really evenly and consistently. And something that they mentioned was weather isn't necessarily going to make it respond differently if you're running in the very cold yeah. um, or the very what I would What I would recommend is, you know, just be aware of your elements. Like it is a knit upper, so we wouldn't want you running through trails and, and right, puddles ice, and everything. Yeah. But if it is going to be cold, you know, throw in an extra layer of socks. Just make sure you would um, anything else that, that you're going to do when you go out on a cold run. Right. But I. It, wouldn't stop me from throwing yeah. it on and going out. You still get that springy feel. It's yeah. not like frozen foam uh, under your feet. Right, right. <laughs> cool. So Maria wants to know um, if the float ride runs true to size. Um, we've heard different things from different people, and it, it really comes down to, you know, a, a preference. Uh, everyone's feet are shaped differently. I'm size 12, but I'm a little wider than some other people, whereas uh, people who are narrower are going to think there's a little bit of room here. Mm -hmm. Um, again, I, I, it's all about trying it out and seeing what works for you. I've heard there's a little bit, people think there's a little bit of room in the mesh, but I think those people need to go out and run a little bit because mm -hmm. as I said, the cage kind of holds your foot in. You're not going to be um, shifting on that platform of the shoe over time because of it. Yeah. So, whereas it may feel a little bit different than most shoes, which, you know, is kind of the point, it wouldn't stop that from um, going and, and getting size down. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I noticed just wearing the shoe myself because I'm not used to kind of that give that the knit has. Yeah. Um, you know, my foot is really secure back here, mm -hmm. but I maybe would go down a half a size just to feel a little bit more snug. Yeah, and, and that's been the general recommendation. About half you know, a there's, size. There's going to be some room to play with here. So yeah. if you want a size down, feel free to, you know, just take a half size. Cool. Um, Hannah wants to know a little bit more about the heel cup. She says, I tried them on. The heel cup felt a little large. Are you planning on making any adjustments to that area? Yeah, so as I said, you know, th the product's not changing for another year, but in 2019, we've heard the feedback. Really depends on what type of runner you are. Mm -hmm. um, some people are more forward runner, some people are in their midfoot, some people are on their heel. If you're running on your heel, like with most shoes, you're gonna feel a little slip, and that's more of an adjustment of, you know, how tight should I be tying them, maybe um, actively changing your gait as you're going through your run, so maybe if you are, feeling that heel slip, there's something you can change. I wouldn't recommend changing your style just right. to, to fit the shoe. Um, I mean, that's our job, but we will take this feedback and there are gonna be a few adjustments to, to the heel and, and the way the shoe responds to, to the foot. Awesome. Yeah. And I know that this is probably different runner by runner, but McKay is wondering how the arch support is in the flow ride. Um, so the arch, there's a ton of support in this shoe. like. Where the see inside here. Yeah, where, where the cushioning um, offers that support, there's an EVA rim right here mm -hmm. that you sit up with. If you didn't have that, it kind of would just be that direct impact on, on your foot. So this offers support through the entire midfoot while still getting the benefits of that responsiveness from the flow ride foam. Cool. Again, it kind of goes back to put them on, take a lap around the store yeah, or a lap like around the block. That's and kind see of the whole point with our hashtag feel the float ride yeah and it's, it's just that you know it it looks a little striking it's a little bit different than yeah. what's out there but we encourage people to get them on their feet and yeah. just just tell us how they feel good deal yeah. um Kovas also wants to know is this geared toward lighter runners or can heavier folks use them as well um it's definitely for all shapes and sizes of yeah. people um I wouldn't I wouldn't tell anyone to not run in this shoe. And like I said, people have taken it right out of the box mm -hmm. and achieved you know, some of the, their highest mileages that, that they've ever had. On the other end of the spectrum, if somebody is just getting into running and, and you know, is um, playing with low mileage, I would absolutely encourage it because it's gonna give you that feeling that a lot of shoes um, don't where it, it's more inviting. It, it's, it, it feels good while you're running. The yeah. point of a running shoe, I always say, is um, it should, you should never be thinking about running while you're running. Right. And this really provides that distraction-free aspect that we were going for. Yeah, where you can kind of get into it, zone out, you're yeah. not thinking my feet hurt, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, how much longer do I have to go? Exactly. That's kind of the feeling that these shoes give. Right. Um, Eric is wondering, what would you say about this shoe in regards to people who are dealing with plantar fasciitis? It's a tough one. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> and I've, I've struggled with, you know, running injury my... <coughs> entire running life and it's just something that kind of happens um, 
the shoe certainly wasn't intended to prevent plantar fasciitis, right. and I know a lot of people struggle with it. What I would say um, from a from a uh, running perspective is to you know know your body and just kind of know what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. um, apply the right stretching, maybe some physical therapy. Yeah. But um, it's I can't say it's gonna you know fix your plantar fasciitis, but give it a try and you know see how you yeah, feel. Yeah, go from there. I happen to know working at Experticity, there are many insoles that you can buy, and the insole on the float ride is removable, so you can stick something else yep, in there if that helps you. And, and whatever you yeah, have heard of plenty of people doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Nick wants to know, what do you have for a heel drop in this model? I believe it's an, an eight. Or not that eight, sounds eight right. Yeah, some, something <laughs> right around there. Um, yeah, I'm not the product expert here, but uh, I, I love the shoe. I do run in it all the time. So um, I can, I, I think we have the specs on the, on the uh, We module, do. Right? Yeah. So if you check out Experticity um, and learn a little bit more about this product, we did ac actually have a chance to talk to um, the innovations team at Reebok and they were able to give us all of those specs. So you can check out uh, the current module that's live, learn everything that you need to know about Floatride, um, and then use your incentive to feel it yourself. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Reebok and Floatride going forward. Sure. What can we expect from you guys? So um, the Floatride foam franchise, we're going to be rolling this out uh, across our running offering over the next year and, and into the future. Um, if you go on Reebok.com now, we are offering uh, the Floatride 6000, which is actually based on one of our uh, classics models. We've taken some inspiration from there and made this complete knit upper with the Floatride bottom. Oh, cool. It's not uh, supposed to be you know, a traditional running shoe. It's right. supposed to be more of a stylistic play, um, but that is kind of where we are taking float. So we're going to we're going to sprinkle it in uh, along our entire offering. Cool. Um, coming up this summer, something we're really excited about is uh, the float ride run fast pro, which is this uh, racing flat for um, people competing in 5Ks, 10Ks, you know, collegiate athletes and professionals uh, beyond there. So if you if you're um, involved in track at all, you know, these racing flats that you get are super lightweight but don't offer a lot of support. In the right. same way we wanted to create a lightweight distance shoe, we've created a lightweight cushioned track shoe. So this shoe weighs 100 grams. It's almost lighter than air. Um, they've done, they've created so, so many modifications to make sure that it's dialed in and, and as light as can possibly be while incorporating that float ride, float ride foam. So we're super excited about that. We see that kind of coming to life in June, uh, July time fr frame. And from there, we'll have a few other models that take the same inspiration and the same look and feel that's a little bit different from Floride and draft off of that. Yeah. So it's it's not going anywhere. Very cool. So until the the racing shoe comes out, our experts actually have a chance to check out something else from Reebok. Uh, we're dropping some information pretty soon here about the Harmony. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that fits into the Reebok run long category? For sure. Um, so we have this cool, unique offering in Float Ride, which yeah. is really attention grabbing and something different that's uh, out on the market right now. Um, our Harmony Road and our one series running line is more of what you would expect to see from a traditional running brand. So these shoes are you know, top of the line for distance runners. Um, you can, we, we have a few different offerings in the, in the Road series. If you go to our website, there, there's a few different models that you can check out. But I would say the Harmony Road is a great everyday shoe. Um, you can go out and run in it. I actually run longer distances in it. I'll, I'll take that out if I was, if I run a marathon, I'm probably gonna run in Harmony Road. Mm -hmm. Whereas some people like to feel the float for that distance and, the, and they'll go out on their own. So it is, a, it is again, a preference thing, but um, yeah, the Harmony Road is, is really a built up long distance running shoe. Very I'd cool. I'd recommend it. Nice. Well, we're excited to see what comes down the pipeline from you guys. Um, experts can always go to experticity.com, check out the content that we have currently live for Reebok and uh, keep an eye out for what's coming down the road from them. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Really appreciated it.